Greetings, LGR here, and this is a Hot Wheels computer. The one that I had a video on previously saying that I got and needed to fix up, and I have. It is now restored in fully working order. In fact, it's better than it ever was. But this is not what we're exactly talking about today, as you probably know from the video title. <laughs> this is the Barbie computer alternative to the Hot Wheels PC, but there is a problem and that is yeah it doesn't work it, it doesn't turn on whatsoever even with its lovely pink power cord that i got for it plugged in and everything it is uh, on the surface it seems like the same problem that i was having with the hot wheels pc which was a dead power supply and uh, you know we're gonna find out so join me as we try to get this thing working yeah this is gonna be fun Made in Canada by the ill-fated Patriot Computer Company. Yeah, the back of this is, yeah, you know, it's pretty bare, actually. There's only two screws to unscrew to get to the insides of this thing, which I'm going to do in a moment. But uh, just a quick look at the back of this here. you got two USB ports uh, here and here. These are USB 1.1 as far as I know. A VGA connector, a couple audio connectors, a modem, and a serial port. And that's it. Once those two screws are taken off, all you have to do is just lift off the whole case. And it's in this self-contained little cuboid thing here. And uh, on the side, well, you can kind of see what you got going on in here. The insides of these things are very cramped. I mean, this is just my hand outstretched and I don't have the biggest hands in the world. This actually uses a Flex ATX motherboard which is it's just absolutely tiny. We'll get to that here in a moment. But uh, the rest of it, it's pretty standard. I mean, you just have a basic CD-ROM drive and a matching floppy drive. There's a hard drive in here, which most of them were 10 gigs. You have this terrible power supply, which, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, we'll, we'll take this out first and see if that is what's causing our uh, non-powering issue or not. Then there's, uh, of course, we got a fan here, which is actually kind of surprising to me it's just packed in here because behind there even is another fan for the cpu which is a 500 ish megahertz intel celeron and it's it's right up against this so the air is just it's not flowing well whatsoever but that's just how these are designed terribly but uh yeah let's go ahead and get some of these cables out of the way actually before we start removing the cables i unscrewed the power supply because i just want to show you this here Getting this thing out is no easy task. You can see that uh, it is loose now with the those screws taken out, but you actually can't remove it or do anything with it here because of the way it's all packed in place. You have to remove the fan. You have to remove this entire bay. You have to remove these cables. And then you can't get to the rest of it because it's actually hooked in behind all of the rest of this case hardware. Let me kind of show you what I mean. This is a super interesting design, but not the most fun to work on. Uh, this right here, which I'll take off in a moment, actually holds the motherboard in place. And the power supply cable goes from down here and it's clipped. So there is sort of a bit of cable management going in and it's all clipped all along this inside. Okay, I've got the fan removed. I've got this all unhooked and uh, unscrewed here. So we just take this entire assembly out with the floppy drive and the hard drive and set that thing aside. And now we can, uh, you would think you could just pull the power supply out once it's unhooked from the motherboard, but no, it still is not budging. And that is because of all this over here. So I took this screw out and this screw out here. So what we have to do is use this here to pull outward and that will slide along the top here. It doesn't quite, well, this one works a little better than the Hot Wheels PC. Hmm. That's cool. Usually it kind of sticks over here in the corner, but this one works about like how it should. And so you can see here that we've got the entire motherboard and everything coming out with this panel. And there we go. Yeah, this is the uh, entire assembly pulled out right there. And now, of course, we can get to unhooking the power supply from the motherboard itself. And you can kind of see here what I was talking about with the power supply cables being clipped to the case, so it's clipped right here. Uh, it's clipped right back behind there. It's clipped here, clipped up here. It's, you have to undo each one of those in order to 
any do anything with the power supply. So that's why it's not budging because it's just all crammed in there. In fact, I don't know if you can see it, but the case is so tight that you can see that there is a spot in the uh, the chassis here that's cut out for the mess of cables to come out of the power supply because otherwise it wouldn't fit. So they had to get rid of this little structural part of it. <laughs> okay, power supply is completely unhooked. The whole thing is probably gonna get tossed if it indeed turns out to be dead. Just wanted to take a look at the motherboard itself here and make sure that there's no bulging caps or any leakage or anything like that. For the most part, other than being a bit dirty, it looks okay. There's a couple of these little points on here and I might test these little guys. But uh, yeah, another thing that I wanna go ahead and tech, uh, just, just switch out here because it's probably dead or going to die eventually is the uh, CMOS battery. And this uses a standard CR2032, but Check it out, you can't even get to it because the RAM is in the way. So you have to actually take out the stick of RAM to replace the battery, but the RAM <laughs> is so tight, it goes up against the clip for the fan on the CPU. So you can kind of get it out. <sighs> All right, finally. All right, so we can replace the CMOS battery now. Old CMOS battery is out. New one is installed. And uh, this little sticker came off of the RAM when I was taking it out. Computer Direct Outlet. Guess my warranty is now avoided. Okay, got the RAM back in there and I just have a generic test power supply hooked into this because I don't actually have a power supply small enough to put in here, but you know, I, I just wanna test it out anyway and see if it indeed was a dead power supply. So, don't really have anything hooked in except the motherboard and the power button itself, but go ahead and do it. And you just have to kind of press in down here because there's no button anymore. We'll see what happens. Ooh. Well, <laughs> uh, we got power, but that sounds terrible. Yeah, that CPU fan is a real problem. It was dead and dying on the Hot Wheels one as well. Apparently that's a piece of junk. Got some loose bearings or something in there. But it does seem to be working. So I'll hook it up to VGA and see what we got. All right, there we go. We'll get right into the setup from here. 533 megahertz apparently this one has and 128 megs of RAM, which is what the stick said. So that's good. We know the RAM is working. And of course with the uh, battery replaced, we're gonna have to put in some uh, <laughs> accurate information. But yeah. This is good. In fact, I'm thinking we're gonna be able to get this thing uh, fully repaired. Once I get a replacement power supply and another CPU fan, because that thing is dreadful. Okay, hit a bit of a snafu. Uh, <laughs> so I got this replacement power supply. The seller on eBay said it'd be the same. And um, you know, specs are fine. However, it is mirrored from what I need. I, otherwise it would be fine. Because see with this one, the uh, the cables go on the right side. The power supply has them on the left. Well I was thinking, okay, well maybe I could just squeeze it in there anyway, and then maybe get the, the cables you know up and over that way and make this thing work. But guess what? When you do that, uh, it doesn't line up here in the back whatsoever. Okay, well I got the correct size and shape power supply and here's the one that didn't fit and yes i did try it in all sorts of other positions obviously i couldn't just put it this way because the fan would be on the bottom couldn't put it this way because it just doesn't line up with anything else and it gets in the way of the other stuff and uh, i did think about maybe switching around the insides but with the way the board is configured and where this is and everything it just even if i were to switch all that around it, it just doesn't work, right? I mean, because it would have to be down here. Yeah, anyway. So this is the one we're going with. I'm going to go ahead and install it now. And since I'm in here upgrading some components anyway, I figured I'd go ahead and swap out the existing 128 megabyte RAM stick for 256 megabytes PC-133. Ooh, double the memory. And yes, this is the maximum that the board, or the motherboard can actually uh, support. Yeah, that crappy old CPU fan and this tiny little junk cooler. Those things had to go. We're replacing it with the 
these brand new Cooler Master <laughs> coolers, which I hope fits in here. It's a bit bigger. This is going to be ridiculous. <laughs> but I did check it and it does fit. So, you know, that's cool. All right, so remember that fan that was in here. I don't even know if it was any good, so I'm just going to be replacing it entirely with one of these new Cooler Master relatively silent fans. And, uh, yeah. I thought this fan was going to fit just fine because it's the same exact size, dimensions, and everything supposedly is the one it's replacing, but as you can see, it's not going uh, behind the fan on the power supply, which again is an exact replacement for the one that was dead, so it should be fitting, but it's not. There's just that tiny little bit of overlap there, and as a result, it's not actually lining up with the screw holes in the back. And what I was going to do is maybe move the power supply back just a tiny little bit so that it sat just like a millimeter closer over this way and that the fan would, but no, that's not gonna work because there's a slot underneath the, the, the bottom part of the case here, which prevents the power supply from moving even when the screws aren't uh, screwed into it. So this is just an annoying all around design. I hate this case the more I work on it, <laughs> but whatever. I'll just, uh, I'll get something really sticky and hold it in place. Who needs screw holes anyway? So I just went ahead and attached the fan with some mounting putty for now. I mean, it'll work. But I've got it plugged into a monitor here with the uh, Hot Wheels keyboard plugged in and a mouse. So let's just see what happens. Kind of moment of truth here. Really hoping we get a booting hard drive at this point. I apparently broke it, or it broke itself, because, you know, it was working earlier when I first tested it, and uh, now it's not. I, I have gone through all the troubleshooting steps over the past hour or so, you know, taking everything out piece by piece, check, 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 check. Different power supplies, different memory, different CMOS battery, different CPU, everything, and it does nothing. After a considerable amount of time testing this thing out, and troubleshooting every which way I know how to, I am at my wit's end. So there's one more thing to do, and that is sticking it in the oven. Seriously. Bake at 375 degrees for seven minutes or until a crisp golden brown. Serve as desired. Mmm. <sighs> Smells like fresh Barbie. Okay, that sounds wrong. Okay, here we are again after the cooking. Oh, please, please, please. <gasps> oh. Ha! Oh! Yes! Score one for cooking a friggin' motherboard in the oven. Mmm! So in case you're, you're not aware of what I was trying to do there, yeah, I have nothing plugged in. That, that's fine. I, I'm just so happy it works. Holy crap, this is great. Okay, what I was doing there was uh, reflowing is what it is called, and that is because I have friggin' no idea. Basically, some of these solders and joints and stuff will kind of crack loose after a while, and I'm assuming uh, that since I was doing all this work and like putting new uh, CPU coolers and, and RAM and just all sorts of things to this motherboard, I stressed it to a point where it sort of broke and for whatever reason, I, you know, you put it in the oven, you take all the, the stickers, adhesives, things like that off, make sure it's very clean, and you stick it in the oven for seven minutes, 375 degrees Fahrenheit-ish, and then uh, let it cool off for 10 or 15 minutes. It, it, it worked, man. Oh, that's only the second time I've ever had to reflow something. And both times, it has worked. The Barbie computer lives again. Ah, this is great. Except for this. But, uh, yeah, apparently this uses Windows Me. <laughs> and there's a registry error. Whatever, man, let's just see if it boots. Yeah, screw it, we're just gonna redo this whole thing because there's no sense having Millennium Edition on here anyway, it's the wrong version of Windows. It's supposed to have uh, 98 SE and Millennium Edition sucks. So, let's just uh, go ahead and put a Windows 98. Oh. Okay, well, apparently somebody left uh, Monsters, Inc. Bowling for Dreams in here. 
And no, I'm not going to be showing the entire Windows 98 installation process because eh, when you take into account FDisk and formatting and the installation and the drivers and that is just going to take an hour or two. So yeah, be back momentarily. Finally, the Barbie PC is up and running, fresh install of Windows 98 SE, and I even applied some custom Barbie backgrounds, pink cursor, and uh, you know what? All sorts of other little features. Sound card's working. Uh, that took a little bit to get just because I was trying to find the exact correct uh, drivers for this, but it turns out it was just as easy as going to the Intel website. They still have them up. He just had to figure out that it was the sound max drivers and not the creative drivers that it was trying to give me for this model of motherboard. But once I got that, everything was uh, pretty smooth sailing. So, yeah, check it out here. We've got, uh, yeah, registered to me. 256 megs of RAM. 533 megahertz Celeron. Yeah, it's all here. Uh, a couple other little thingies I haven't installed yet, like the LAN, but who cares? It's not even a LAN, it's a friggin' modem. So, uh, yeah, just to show what's in here, uh, not much at the moment, it's a fresh installation. I did actually back up what was on the drive already, which wasn't much. Honestly, it was just a couple of uh, Barbie installation thingies, and I don't have the CDs for those anyway, so I couldn't really use them. There was no custom anything, really. It was just a basic install of like Windows Millennium Edition. I don't know if it used to have stuff on it. Uh, Hot Wheels computer never did. But, um... Yeah, I do actually have a floppy disk here to test out and see if the disk drive works, which I already know it does because I've been using it for the installation. But yeah, there it is. You can check out my uh, pink mouse pointers and all that good stuff. And then, of course, the CD-ROM drive does work, and to test that out, I installed none other than Doom 2 because I don't know what else you're going to do on a Barbie computer other than play Doom. Certainly not going to play Barbie games. I haven't been able to get to the uh, the music driver to work with like DOS stuff yet. The Hot Wheels computer works with uh, General MIDI. This one doesn't seem to yet. I don't know why, but I'm sure I'll get it working. Either way, though, I mean, it plays DOS stuff nicely. It's uh, I'm sure it'll play Barbie games, but who cares? You can play Doom too. Let's just get out of here. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, that is uh, that is the Barbie computer. This has been a phenomenal journey to take to get this thing working again. <laughs> it is a doom great with a, a pink uh, bar up at the top there and mouse cursors and everything. I, I think this is just, this is wonderful. So I'm sure you'll be seeing more of this machine sometime in the future whenever I decide to uh, maybe do a video talking about the Hot Wheels computer and the Barbie computer side by side, their history and all that stuff, what happened to them, because they were pretty much unmitigated disasters, not the least of which is because of this terrible, terrible hardware here. And, uh, yeah. Well, that is, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching.